Hello, Hemfield. This is Pastor Doug at Hemfield Church of the Brethren. We're going to do our midweek devotional tonight. It's going to look a little different. I'll share some of my stories, some of the reflections over the last year, and uh, sing a little at the end. Uh, I've not done that yet, so hopefully it comes through clear. As you sign on, uh, say hello. Just let me know you're here. I know that this holiday is going to look different, this holiday season, so I pray that as you have these conversations, as you seek to make plans, as you talk with other people, um, that you allow grace in the conversation. It's... uh. I think many people are feeling fatigued right now, feeling tired, and when our emotions are high and our energy is low, uh, that's, a, that's a good cocktail for, uh, for uh, a family fight or uh, breaking communication. So I'll start here in about a minute, and uh, it's like I said, I just want to reflect on the year uh, and kind of where I feel God's leading us. So I pray that you are blessed by this time. I pray that you are edified by this time. And uh, if you have any questions from tonight, any questions from the other videos, or maybe even a service that you've joined us with, uh, please reach out, call the church, um, and reach out and touch base with me. So we are live tonight at Hemfield Church of the Brethren. I'm coming from my office and the camera's elevated a little bit because uh, I'd probably be a little embarrassed if you saw my desk. My organization is not what you would call great. Let's open with a word of prayer and uh, we'll get started. Father, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for... Your brothers and sisters here, I thank you for this opportunity to speak about what you've done in my life, speak about what you're doing here at Hemfield, and just uh, seek after your Holy Spirit leading and guiding us. May we praise your holy name, and may we allow this time to hear your voice. So we thank you, Father. We lift this to you in Christ's name. Amen. So one of the things that's been made very apparent to me in this year is how important relationship is and uh and that may sound really simple but deep relationships that we need people that we can call that we need people that we can rely on that we need people that we can relate to Hello, Myers. Hello, Rich Bushong. Myers are coming from afar. Looks like my dad's on. And the misers. Welcome. That We need these deep relationships. We need people that we can trust and, and just speak openly with. And it's, it's one of those things like there's, there's various levels of relationship. You need those deep relationships where people can call out gifts in you and encourage you and strengthen you. And then you need those relationships where you can pour into another, where you're listening and you're seeking where God might be moving in their life, where you can empathize with them and, and walk with them. And I find so often we want to, some of us, want to fix a problem or have an answer when what is needed is just being. Someone just needs an ear um, to talk to, or our presence to be with them. It makes me think of my uncle. When my my uh, I had a teacher who had uh, open heart surgery. Now this is after uh, I had been out of his class, and uh, when he was recovering, my uncle would go and sit with him. And sometimes, you know, when you're recovering from surgery, you don't always want to see people, and he'd pretend to sleep while my uncle he would just sit there, and and sometimes he'd take a nap with him. And then sometime later, my, my uncle uh, got cancer. And so this, this, uh, this gentleman, Matt, 
uh, who's a brother in Christ. He was a teacher at LS. He'd go over and sit with my uncle. And every once in a while, he'd get home and, and his wife would ask him, did you have a good nap today? Sometimes we don't need to have an answer. Sometimes it's just a matter of presence. And I mean, that's been no more apparent than this year when we are physically distanced, when we're trying to gauge how many people we've been around if we want to keep others safe or how many people others have been around if we're trying to stay safe. But we need those relationships. They make us better they keep us grounded and i realize some of the deepest relationships some some of where i've grown the most was in a men's bible study that started with uh another uncle of mine john and, and myself and soon we invited my brother and and about two years in we had 15 or 20 people meeting in his garage 15 or 20 men and we would read scripture and we would pray and we would confess and we would challenge one another. And it was a great time to just grow and learn and listen. Because, I mean, what we see on Sunday mornings or what we see when we get together uh, may not reveal the full story. But when we have those times in those small groups around Scripture where we can be completely open, we can pray through our struggles and hear the struggles that others may be going through. We can confess our sin and re receive forgiveness and be released from that. And as I think about our body here at Hemfield, I, I want us to deepen those relationships. We're looking at starting a men's group with the young families. Uh, and we'll see how we'll see where that leads. I may start another men's group depending on the need in the body. But we have so many deep people of faith that aren't quite connected yet. And man, when we wrap those two and three cords together, when we're sealed in the Holy Spirit and we're strengthening and seeking together, God can move in ways that we can't even imagine. You know, Pastor Pete used to quote that verse. I believe it's out of Ephesians. To him who can do more than we can imagine. I'd have to look it up. and Maybe I'll post it later. But to him be all glory and honor and power. The enemy wants to distract us with all kinds of numbers, whether it's people or finances. And God will take care of all that stuff. We've seen it happen in the past. I've not only seen it in my own life, but I've seen it in this church's life. It's normally a momentary distraction until God's glory is revealed. So I pray that as we move forward, I'm looking forward to, to working with the Ed team because we have a lot of grounded people there with ideas of books we can read or studies we can do. That as we move forward, we can deepen the relationships here. And if, you've, if you're if you looking for a church, if you've not been to church for a while and, and you're seeking, I'd invite you to join us on Sunday morning at 9.30. We are sitting physically distanced. We are wearing masks. We're not singing right now just so everyone's on the same page. I know different churches are doing different things. You know, as I speak about these relationships... Uh, the ministerium's been meeting the last few months specifically. And there's four or five of us that typically join. And uh, I just appreciate getting to know those brothers. Uh, it's uh, Pastor Jason at the UMC Church. Uh, Pastor Mark at the EC Church on Grace. Um, Oh man, Pastor Tim Beisline, he's, oversee he's overseeing the, the Churches of God in Landisville and, and real life down there on the corner of Lemon and State. We've connected with, uh, with our brother at the UCC, Pastor Chris. Turns out we all have the first name, <laughs> same first name, no. Um, but it's been good to hear what they're processing. And I mean, even when there's only five of us there, none of us are practicing the same thing when it comes to protocols. 
And we're all processing the same conversations as members come at us with different understandings, whether it's medical or political. And it's been interesting to navigate. But we continue to have the conversations. We continue to uplift one another. We continue to pray for each other. And something awesome happened. Uh, Jason and I were talking after our last uh, ministerium meeting uh, outside of Geneva. And as we were talking, a Toyota truck pulled in and a, a young lady named Michelle, we later learned, pulled up and said, hey, is the bakery open? We said, no, they closed at one. And uh, we said, what are you looking for? And she said, well, I just wanted to buy some baked goods for the, the hospital staff. And we looked at her and we said, is everything okay? And she said, no, my husband's in the hospital and, and told us what was going on. And uh, we told her, look, uh, we're pastors. Do you mind if we pray for you? And she shared more of her story with us. And uh, she allowed us to pray for her and her husband, Michael. And I mean, here's the cool thing. So, I mean, we're in Geneva's uh, parking lot, which is part of Real Life Church of God. And uh, she went down to Geneva Bakery and ran into one of our sisters who goes to Grace E.C. So, in that time, three and four and five churches were praying for this couple. And he's, to my knowledge, since been home. So God is alive and present, and he's moving through the bodies here, and he's, and that makes me so excited. But we need to maintain our focus and let the distractions die down, the noise die down of the politics, and the noise die down of, of the charged emotional conversations where you can't get a word in edgewise. You know, sometimes you have to revisit a subject or revisit a topic and, and ask questions. And sometimes you just have to listen. But I'm excited where God's leading us. I look forward to seeing how we can deepen the relationships here through small group studies. We're part of Right Now Media, and I think we can begin utilizing that tool better. And I'm looking forward to seeing how God continues to transform lives through His Holy Spirit as we proclaim the work of Christ on the cross. This Sunday, we're starting our, our Advent season, and we're going to work through the Beatitudes, the Blessed Are. And I'd invite you to join us in that. Uh, we're going to walk through the Beatitudes and characters in the Advent story. So this Sunday, we're going to talk about Anna uh, out of Luke 2. So I pray that you might be blessed tonight. I am going to close in a song. Uh... I wanted to have a little fun with it. We've not been able to sing, and I've been singing in a church choir since I was five years old. I remember walking in like uh, Mr. Rogers, you know, hanging my coat up. I was late. Um, that must be my way. Five years old, I was late. I'm still that way. Um, I remember hanging up my coat and like singing while I was going to my seat. And uh, I've missed singing. I've missed hearing the voices here. Man, we have... We have some beautiful voices here, and I know when people are missing because I don't hear their voice singing the, singing the hymns and the praise songs. But it's for a season, and it's for a reason. And this too will pass. So I'd like to close in a hymn tonight. It's Amazing Grace. We all know it. But what I'd like to do, I'd like to sing it as we'd hear in church maybe. Uh, then sing it maybe as an a the animals might. Then uh, maybe a TV theme song like Gilligan. And there's a Lead Belly. I think Lead Belly would would be in there. And then we'll close with uh, with the way we'd sing it in church. So long as I can hear it in my head. If anything's off, please forgive me. You can correct me later. We're gonna sing now. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was 
was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. The animals. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear. And grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Gilligan. Through many dangers, toils, and snares I have already come. Tis grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. Grace will lead me home. Let's do a little lead belly. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow. It's a little high. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine. But God who called me here below will be forever mine. Let's close the way we know how. When, when we think, <laughs> see now I can't do it. <laughs> oh yeah, let's just close the way I know how. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Man, as you are at home, pick your favorite praise song, pick your favorite hymn, sing at the top of your lungs. If you're uh, Kevin, Kevin Zern, he'd say he's a, a prison singer, a few bars behind and always looking for a key. That's all right. God made your voice, lift it, exalt him, praise him, sing, 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 and let your spirit rise to his. I pray that you may be blessed tonight. I pray that whether you're able to gather with your family or not tomorrow, that you can connect with them and let them know your appreciation. And I pray that if there's any tension with you and a brother or sister in Christ, if there's any tension with you and a family member, that you reconcile before you join on Sunday, that you make things right. Humble yourself as Christ humbled himself. And watch his glory show up. I miss you. I love you guys. Be blessed tonight. Be a blessing. Pastor Doug's out.